other side. Just gonna switch tabs. Okay, feels like I'm ready to go. Okay, so looking at the numbers, we're going really well. We've got 33 people here already. Um, I'm going to give it another minute or so before I get jump in because I know there's like 90 odd people registered for today. So give everybody a chance. Um, so let's have a look where you're from. So I'm in the Hunter Valley, which is two hours drive north of Sydney. Um, and um, yeah, you know, a beautiful place. It's spring here right now. So it's um, starting to warm up. It's looking, it's, it's going to be a wonderful summer. Okay, so where we got Washington State, Texas, Vancouver Island, okay, Maine, Atlantic City, Hudson Valley, Austin, Austin, Wisconsin, Manhattan, Monterey, New York City, um, New York State, Tennessee, Charles, Charlton, New York, New Jersey, California. California, it's the first California today. Okay, Florida, Arkansas, Fort Lauderdale, and uh, Maui, we've got a couple of people here, usually from Hawaii, which is fantastic. And obviously there's a really good arts community in Hawaii, which is awesome. So, okay, I'm gonna jump in now and we will just go from there. And obviously I'm on the wrong slide, which is not a good start. So let me fix that. I got distracted. Okay, so. I think this is really important. Q4 is coming. And if you're on art storefronts like I am, and I know a lot of the people in this room are on art storefronts, if you've seen or heard anything about Q4, it's, it's sounding really daunting. Okay. And what I wanted to do was I take away some of that apprehension about Q4, also help you set your expectations um, appropriately. And finally, um, you know, help you get an idea of how to plan for Q4 to make it work for you. Okay. And I think that this is the key, right? At the end of the day, Q4 is really important. Yes, it's, a, it's the most, it's the busiest time of the year for sales, but it, it, it's, there's no point getting too excited about it and not having it work for you. Okay. And I think that that's a lot of the, the fear and questions I see at the moment. And I've been having conversations with some of my clients in the last couple of weeks about Q4. And, you know, people are saying, oh, my God, I'm looking at what they're telling us we have to do and I'm freaking out. Okay. So this is all about not freaking out and making it the best possible that you can for yourself to fit your situation. And I think that's the, that's the key with Q4 right now is making it work for you in the way that works for you, okay? And, you know, one of the conversations I had this morning uh, was you've got to be genuine, you've got to be you. And, you know, that's everything. I don't know, you know, if this is your first time listening to me or it's your 10th time listening to me, but one of the things I keep saying, which is really, really important is you need to be genuine to you. Okay, and this is all part of that. So I'm going to walk through this. So today we're going to talk about planning and prep for Q4, um, setting your expectations appropriately. And I think this is really key because this helps you with the other stuff, mentally preparing yourself for the processes and the essentials so you don't get overwhelmed. Okay, because this, this is the thing that I see a lot of is people getting so overwhelmed that they actually don't do anything for Q4 and they're missing an opportunity. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. Right, so let's jump in. So I said this before, saying it again, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Okay, there's not one thing that you're gonna to do today, next week, next month, that's gonna make your life change, okay? It's the cumulative effort of every single thing you do every single day, every week, every month, that makes the difference. Okay, so there's never one thing that's gonna change your life. So forget that. And don't try and find that because it doesn't exist, okay? The only thing that's going to change your life and your business is you putting in that consistent effort every single day, every single week, every single month, over a long period of time, right? If you expect results tomorrow, it's not going to happen tomorrow. And I think that I, I, I still see that and I still see people getting frustrated. They've just launched their website. They've done their first giveaway. They've 
got 50 new people on their email list and they haven't got any sales. And that's exactly what should happen. You won't get sales. When you're starting from scratch, it just doesn't happen. You might get lucky, but you can't plan for sales in your first year, really. Okay, and we're gonna talk through that because uh, I think that's really important a part of um, setting expectations. So just remember going through this, this is a marathon, not a sprint. You do not have to do everything. Don't try and do everything if you can't. Okay, so planning and preparation. So as I said, I'm on art storefronts. I run two websites myself on art storefronts and I know the majority of people here are on art storefronts. So I'm gonna be a little bit art storefront centric, but at the same time, this applies to every artist trying to sell in this quarter, okay? Now, if you're on art storefronts, they are releasing and they've started talking about it, this very comprehensive playbook for Q4 sales, right? But it's also really daunting. Like I've heard conversations and people are feeding back to me saying, they want me to post five to 10 times a day. They want me to do this. They want me to do that, right? Slow down. Don't get freaked out, okay? And this is what we're going to talk through, okay? It is a really good playbook and it helps you with key dates. But what you need to do is pick and choose what works for you, okay? And I'm going to explain that in more detail in a little while. You do not have to do everything. Now, I'm going to say that again because I think it's really important. Do not try and do everything. If you can't do everything, don't do it. Pick the things that are important and stick with those. And the stuff that you can't do, that's fine. Move on, right? Don't beat yourself up over it because you don't have the energy and strength to beat yourself up over everything that you can't do. It's just life. You can't do everything, okay? So just accept it as, as is and move on. Okay, so time management is the key, right? And there is a lot of things that they, will, they suggest you do. So what we need to do is find this, the, the, the mix that works for you. Now, if they're telling you to, you know, our storefronts are suggesting you do up to 10 posts a day on, on Facebook and Instagram. Now, I don't know about you. I run my business full-time and I, run, I do run three businesses, but I run my art businesses full-time, okay? I do not have time to do 10 social posts a day, right? So don't do it. Maybe what you need to do is if, let's say right now we're doing daily social posts, right? So right now we're posting on Facebook every single day, Instagram every single day. So in the lead up to Q4, instead of doing once a day, maybe we do double, do two a day or three a day, but we don't have to do 10. Even doing twice as many as what you're currently doing is better than doing nothing, okay? So do what you, can, what you can. And I heard a really interesting comment and I didn't understand it at first the other day. And the more I hear it and the more I mull it over, the more I think it makes sense, right? So the comment is anything worth doing well is worth doing badly. So what that means is if it's really important, if you could do something really, really well and do it 10 times a day, but if you can't do it 10 times a day, but you can do it one time a day, it's still better than doing zero times a day. Okay. So find the mix for you. We're going to go from doing one a day to two a day. And I think that's tons, right? If you can do five a day, do it. But if you can't just do what you can. And uh, Hammer's question is it absolutely right. How do you come up with the content for posting two to three times a day? I don't know. Right? For us, what we will do is we will do some reposting of old content. We will post a lot of shared links, sharing products in the store. Right? But we're finding new content right now. Like, I don't have the headspace for that. So I don't know many people that do. So instead of posting continuously 10 times a day, just try and increase your frequency from once a day to twice a day. Or if you're doing once every second day, try and do every day, okay? But just find the balance for you. And don't you beat yourself up about the fact you can't do 10 times a day. You just can't, so move on, okay? Just accept it as fact, okay? So next... Setting your expectations. And I think this is probably the biggest headache that I get and the biggest frustration that I see a lot of artists having, right? So let's be realistic about how we set our goals. 
So there's no point you saying, I'm going to sell $10,000 worth of art in Q4 when you haven't sold a single piece this year, okay? So if you've sold nothing this year, your goal for Q4 is to sell one piece or two pieces, okay? Keep it simple. If you've sold, let's say you've sold $2,500 in the first nine months of this year, then your goal for Q4 is say $2,750. So that plus a bit. So that's 10% extra. So you're going to double your turnover in the next, um, in the next three months. That's perfect, okay? But if you haven't sold anything this, Q this, this year, then there's no way you're going to do those sorts of numbers, okay? You might get lucky. But what, I'm, what, I can, what concerns me and the big issue that I see in um, the f social posts I see and the engagement and the conversations I have with people is, is they're like, I need to make $10,000 this week, right? I haven't made it. How do I make $10,000? And the, the short answer for that is you're not going to do that online in a short period of time. Online is great because it's scalable. Right, so you can sell to a hundred people a week. You can sell to a thousand people a week. You can get really big, right, online. But it takes time and it takes engagement and it takes a big audience. If you're starting from scratch and you have to make ten thousand dollars, then you're not going to make it online. You need to go and hustle. You need to go and knock on people's doors. You need to physically go and talk to people. That's the only way you're going to get there, right? But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about online sales in the final quarter of the year. So be realistic. A good guide is what you've done in the first nine months of the year. You should be able to do that plus a bit more in Q4. Okay, that's a really good starting point. Okay. Um, the other way to look at it is if you did Q4 last year, and let's say Q4 last year, you sold $1,000 worth of work. Then this year, you want to sell two. You want to sell $2,000 worth of work. Okay, that's a really good way to set your expectations and being realistic. Because I think the realistic expectations is a big challenge for artists. And it's also the biggest pain point I see because people have expectations that are up here when realistically their expectations should be down here. And they feel let down. They feel like they're failing because their expectations are far too high for where they're at in their journey, okay? And that's the key. It needs to be where you're at where you're at in your personal journey. There's no point comparing yourself to me or comparing yourself to another artist who's got similar art because they're still at a different place in their journey. It's that simple. Okay, so focus on where you're at in your journey. If you did this last year, I'd aim to double what you did last quarter, in the final quarter of last year. If you haven't done it this year, look at the sales that you've got for the beginning of the year and you wanna double that. That's where you wanna go. And that's exactly what I'm saying. Um, London, I, I, I really think, and this is the experience that I have in my own businesses, whatever I sell in the months between January and September, I generally can do that again in the final quarter of the year. So I double my turnover in the final quarter of the year, okay? So that's a good way to set your expectations. And that gives you a, a benchmark too. So if you got to, say, 75% of last of the first nine months of the year, that's still better than aiming for an extra, you know, $1,000 or whatever it is. So you just need to set it, set it appropriately. Now, this is really, really important. And I know that there's people watching today and certainly people will be watching in the replay that they just started their online business, okay? So you've had little or no sales at all, right? So it doesn't mean don't do it. Treat this as an exercise for training yourself, okay? There's a lot of things to do when you're running a sale. There's a lot of moving parts. Try and do what you can, right? And it's a really good experience for you and your fans. And your fans will get to know a bit more about you and about your business during the sale. You may get lucky and get a sale, okay? Which is really cool. But what I'm saying is that if you've not sold anything online to date in the last six months, nine months, or two months that you've been up online, then it's quite likely you won't sell during Q4. But don't think that that's a bad thing, okay? It's not a question of you or your art sucking, right? Don't take it personally. 
because it's not that. What it is, is that you're not ready. And this is this is what I'm describing in this. So A, your audience isn't big enough, right? So if you've got 100 followers on Facebook, then your audience is too small, right? You need a following on Facebook of a few thousand. Same for your email list. If you've got 50 people on your email list, then you're not going to sell to anybody on your email list. This is too small, okay? Or... You could have had a list that you've built over the last few months, which is a thousand people on the list, but you've only built it in the last few months. So they're not at the point where they know, like, and trust you yet. So they're not ready to buy. The sale might turn a couple of people into potential buyers, which is great. But if you have the expectation that it may not happen, then you get a good surprise rather than the other way around where you go, okay, I'm going to sell a hundred pieces and this quarter, even though I've sold nothing before, and then you have you feel like a failure because you haven't sold anything, okay? To look at it the other way around. This is a learning experience. This is training for you and for your um, audience. Really, really important, okay? you If you've only just started, then you won't sell, all right? Again, you might get a great surprise, and that's awesome, but don't expect to get a surprise. Expect to not sell and expect to make it a learning experience and educate yourself and educate your audience about how to run a sale, okay? Time is a critical marketing ingredient and it's probably the most underestimated marketing ingredient at all. If you start marketing today, the efforts that you do today are going to have an effect in your business in six to 12 months, if you start marketing tomorrow, it's six to 12 months from then. So if you haven't started marketing yet, then whatever you do today is helping your business in the future. It's not going to necessarily help you tomorrow. Okay, so if you understand that and you accept that, then you're going to be okay. You're going to have yourself in the right headspace and you're going to do really well out of this because you're going to learn from the experience. But if you think that you can skip time and that you can just make money, then you're setting yourself up for failure. And I really don't want you to do that because failure at this stage in your business doesn't help you, okay? So it's not a failure, it's a learning experience. You're trying to educate yourself about how to run a sale because this time next year, you're gonna be preparing for Q4 next year. You've got a 12 months worth of marketing under your belt. You've been working really, really hard and you're setting yourself up for success next year, okay? So look at it that way. It's the work that you do every single day, every single week that affects your marketing results. It's not one little thing that you do. There's no silver bullet. There's no one thing I can tell you. If you do this one thing, then everything's going to happen. There is one thing I can tell you that will make everything work. It's focus on the people and do it every single day. But that's not going to be a silver bullet because it takes time. Time is the most underrested marketing ingredient. Um, really understand that nothing happens overnight okay so that's a really good question um dennis okay so he said does your regular uh, facebook viewers get turned off by posting many of your old posts they may so they may say this personal gallery is not worth my time no so the short answer to that is really no right so if you post something on facebook today there's a good chance that less than 5% of people, certainly less than 10% of people that follow you on Facebook are going to see that post, right? So if you post that, again, that post again in three months' time, there's a good chance that only another 5% to 10% of people are going to see it. And they could be a completely different group of people. So don't even think about it. But the other side of it is that you need to reinforce. If you're sitting on the subway, um, you will see the same ad in the same subway car four different times, right? It's about repetition. Seeing things more than once helps you remember it, helps you engage with it. So don't even think that people are going to get bored by you reposting old content. Don't even go that way. Yet, London, that's perfect. You made one sale, aim for two. That's, that's the sort of way that you're going to go forward, okay? So let's keep moving forward. Mentally preparing yourself. Right, and this is the problem that a lot of artists face, okay? So firstly, realistic goals, and we've talked about that. Set goals that work for you, that are about where you are in your business today. Not about where I'm at in my business, not about where someone else on Facebook is at in their business, exactly where you are today right now, okay? That's the only way you're going to succeed. Set your goals for you, okay? 
work out how much time you've got available. You know that the next few weeks, the next month or two, you've got a really heavy schedule with other things in your life, whether it's family events, whether it's other do jobs, a day job, whatever it is, then um, you need to work out how much time you have available to do this sales process, to, to promote Q4 sales, Black Friday sales, all of that. Now, if you've only got two hours a week to do that, then you have to prioritize and do the things that are most important. And I will talk about that in a little moment. What are the things I think are absolutely critical? But if you have limited time, then you need to be really careful and make sure you do the things that really matter, okay? And then if you have extra time, then you can do some of the other things. But prioritize the important things. If you can't do everything, then don't try to do everything. Don't try doing everything just because someone says, oh, you've got to do all of this, right? You can only do what you can do. So if you can afford to put an extra hour or two a week in helping promote your um, sale and everything else, then do that. If you can't, just prioritize the, the time that you spend, okay? Don't just say, I haven't got the time and don't do anything because that's garbage. Because if, if that's the case, then what you need to do is just close your website and walk away now. Because if you don't have the time and you can't do anything in Q4, then you're, you're probably wasting your time full stop. But the reality is we all have time. It's about prioritizing the time that we have available for the things that matter the most for us in our business right now, okay? And I'm gonna talk about the things that I think are really essential in a little while, but let's, let's just keep moving for a sec. So do what you can, but do what you can, not what someone else is saying you need to do or not what um, everybody else thinks that they're doing, what you can do. And at the very least, if you can go from doing every second day on Facebook to every day or doing twice a day, that's a huge difference to um, the time frame that you have to achieve, right? So just focus on the little things. Try not to dig yourself a hole by giving yourself too much work to do, okay? So what are the essentials? I believe that these are the must-do things when you're leading into a sale and promoting a sale, okay? So if you're doing daily posts on Facebook, then I want to see you increase your tempo to at least two posts a day. Okay, if you're doing a post every second day, then I want to see you increase your post to every day. You're going to be doing consistent weekly emails in the lead up. The weekly emails in the lead up to your sale are all about romance. They're telling stories. They're getting people engaged. They're getting people talking about you and your art, right? You're not trying to sell. You don't try and sell until you get to the sale, okay? And then you sell and they, they, those, those sale related emails, there's probably four or five that you have to do. You don't have to do 10, you don't have to do 20, but you probably need to do four or five. You need to do an announcement. You need to do a, um, a you know, one after, a couple of days after the announcement you need to do. Then a, um, you know, if you're relaunching it or you're extending your sale, announce that and then give them a couple of warnings before the sale ends, right? So there's four or five emails you have to send. But you, you know, if you can do 10 emails, that's awesome. But if you don't, do the four or five that really matter, right? Announcing a follow-up, a extension, and then maybe two reminders right near the end of the sale just to get people to sell, because the, to buy. Because this is the time when you want to make sure that people are seeing you and one email is not enough. They need to see something two or three times before they act on it probably. So do that. When it comes to what you need to focus on, focus on your email list and your social media. The email list is your most valuable asset outside of your work. So treat it with respect, treat it with the attention it deserves and engage with these people, talk with these people, start conversations with these people because these are your potential buyers. It's not some random person you've never heard of before who's never even followed you on Facebook yet. It's the person who's on your email list who's going to buy from you. Okay, so focus on those people and then follow up with social media because the more social media you do during that time, it's going to help stay top of mind for people. Okay, and the other thing is, and this is where I don't know what it is about artists, but we like to we like to make things really complicated. 
okay? If you're going to have a sale, make the offer really simple. 30% off all prints, all purchases, everything in my store until this date. That's all it needs to be. Okay, and then if you extend it, you extend it, right? Keep it really simple. Don't make that they have to do this to get qualified for this and then that to qualify for that, right? The harder you make it, the harder it is for someone to buy. Just simple, it's much simpler to say 30% off in the store, automatic discount, no other coupon codes apply, just purchase now, right? It's the simplest way to do it. Just make sure you turn off your other coupon codes so people don't stack them. Or you give them a coupon code and say, use Black Friday checkout at checkout and save 30% off. Either way you do it, whatever way you do it, the key is keep it really simple. Personally, we, don't, we, don't, we only offer 15% year round. So we will do 25% off store wide. Um, and our margins are set that 25% off store wide is fine. Okay, but you need to set the appropriate. Um, code as a, a appropriate discount for you and your audience for that thing. Um, I'm just gonna go in through some questions right now. So Dion, yeah, that's a great way. Yeah, your, your Facebook page keeps refreshing. It's a magazine. People will see different things all the time. Um, Cynthia, yes, the replay as always is available in my Facebook group. There's a link at the top of this. Um, the chat session, if you're not a member of the Facebook group, I suggest you join it right now. <sighs> okay. Yes, Jonathan, I honestly believe that Facebook is the place to focus when you're selling art. Um, I think that on Instagram, there's certainly lots of artists and photographers on Instagram. I think there's less buyers than there are artists and photographers on Instagram. Um, when you do lives, I got no problem with doing lives on Facebook and Instagram at the same time. Do it, do it. Do, the, the, the thing with lives is a lot of people, they freak, they freak out about them. They certainly are valuable. There's no question, but they're not essential. What's essential is you engaging with your audience. So do what works for you, okay? If you've got time and you feel comfortable getting, jumping in the front, or front of the camera and doing a Facebook live, absolutely do it. And if you can stream it to Facebook and Instagram simultaneously, even better. That's awesome. Just do what you can. Okay, Courtney, do I recommend automated coupons for Q4? It's the only time I use an automated coupon, but the key with using an automated coupon is that you turn off all your other coupon codes and you make it clear that during the Q4 sale, no other coupon codes will be allowed. Because if you don't, what happens is if someone, say, uses your first 20 coupon code as well as um, the 25% off, they get a 45% discount, okay? So if you're not sure how to do an automated coupon code and turn off the other ones, just give them a coupon code, okay? Enter this coupon code for 30% off at checkout. They can only use one coupon code at, the right, at a time. So if they enter the wrong coupon code, then they just get the discount for the other one, okay? Whereas if you have both coupon codes turned on, an automated discount and one that they can enter, they could potentially get 50% off and you don't want that to happen, okay? So set, your, set the coupon code appropriately for you. If you're not sure, the simplest one is enter this coupon code to save 30% off and then they can't stack it. It's not possible to stack two coupon codes on top of each other. Only way to stack is when you're using an automated coupon code and a coupon code. Okay, so keep your um, social, your emails focused over the next few weeks. Focus on trying to increase the tempo. Focus on trying to engage your audience, right? Ask questions, show them different things. You know, put two pictures up and say, which one do you like? Which one do you prefer? Everything you can do to increase your engagement right now is going to help you in the sale period. Okay, right now, the period leading up to the sale period, so now between now and, you know, mid-November, whenever you choose to launch your sale, um, right now, what you want to do is just increase your engagement, get people having conversations with you, get people engaging with your work, okay, because the more you can do that, that brings you more top of mind when it comes to the sales, okay, so that's one of the things that we're working on at the moment is increasing the tempo, but, um, you know, just trying to find ways to engage with the audience more to keep them thinking about us as it comes into the sale period of time. 
And I know, I don't know how it is in the States, but I know like in, in Australia, much, much of Australia is still in a lockdown at the moment and it's going to start easing in the next couple of weeks. But what's really interesting is that um, I think a lot of people don't want to go to the shops. So a lot of shopping this Christmas is going to happen online, right? And that's awesome for us as online retailers. We get to take, take advantage of that. So everything you can do to make it easier for people to buy from you, everything you can do to make it really simple for someone to just click and pay, then that makes your life better, makes their life easier when they're buying their shopping and it'll end up making you more money, okay? So keep everything simple. Don't complicate things. And just focus on making it as easy as possible for someone to purchase your work, okay? Now, that's the end of my content because I thought today was really about just getting your mindset and getting um, ready for this period of time because it is a really important period of time. But I, I think a lot of people just get overwhelmed right now. They're, they're looking at the tasks that they have to do in the next four to six weeks and they're freaking out. Um, I know that's a conversation I've had with a lot of people. So I'm happy to answer any specific questions if anybody else has got any questions because I think it's really important to set yourself up for success here and um, go really hard and build over the next few weeks leading into the sale period. So, okay, so Pat's asked, is there a best window of time for a Christmas sale? So it's really interesting. So the traditional window was Black Friday through for another week or so, right? And Black Friday is what, the last Friday in November? And the problem with that is, is right now shipping times are really slow. Businesses are a bit slow because they're still affected. Their audiences, their um, teams are affected by COVID, all of that. So things are a little bit slower than normal. So what Art Storefronts is actually recommending is that you, you move that whole thing forward two or three weeks. So if you can, um, second week in November and launch your sale then, and then you're not going to have shipping problems that are leading to people not getting things before Christmas. Okay, so ideally, first or second week of November is when you launch your sale, run it for two weeks, and then you can do perhaps in the later weeks in the more traditional Black Friday period, have selected items for sale, ones that you know you can turn around really quickly if that's possible. But yeah, you know, push it through as early as you can and as early as you feel comfortable with because you need to be prepared too. So don't feel like you have to, okay, I'm going to launch the sale tomorrow, but I'm not ready. Plan it, prepare for it, and launch it in four to six weeks, okay? Um, don't freak out, London. That's the whole point. What I'm saying is don't freak out. Your goal this year is to sell two things. You sold one last time, or you've sold one in the past, now you want to sell two. That's as far as it goes. Don't freak out. There's absolutely no point. Marty, don't feel overwhelmed. It really is a question of just running your own race, finding the things that work for you and just focusing on those things, okay? This is for you, where you're at right now, this is practice. Next year is going to be the big one. So this year is all about practice, learning the processes, getting your, some experience. And you might get lucky and get, and get a couple of sales. But yeah, don't freak out about it. Yeah, so supply chain is the, is the reason and that's why um our store fronts are, check, uh, are suggesting you launch two or three weeks earlier okay um i think i will probably go with the second week in november and that gives me plenty of time i know i don't have supply chain issues here in australia but i do have shipping issues here so something can take anything from overnight to six weeks and that's ridiculous right now so it's just the way it is okay um okay len yeah, I think, Len, that's a great idea. So working with one or two other artists and having a little team and um, what people call that sometimes accountability buddies. So it's good to bounce ideas off other people, but it's also really good to have someone to make yourself accountable to because as a business owner, generally we work on our own and we don't have anybody that makes us accountable. So having an accountability buddy where you can get together you know, once a week, for 10 minutes, even if it is only 10 minutes on, on the phone or on Zoom and say, hey, where are you at this week? What are your goals? What are you, um, you know, what have you done? What are you hoping to do next week? And all of that. And that I think really helps because having an accountability buddy uh, 
really makes it easy for you to a feel more accountable but b bouncing ideas off each other you might steal some idea from someone and you know i talked about it in small wins um a little while ago um it started with rick burke rick had an idea he had a, a drawer full of um prints and he put them together in little packs and sold them off and he made a few grand from that and i stopped andy crawford stole that idea and i stole it as well and you know i sold 24 packs at 80 bucks that's what four grand or something um it's really good money for something that I already own was sitting in the drawer. So, you know, you, when you've got someone else to bounce your ideas off, you, you can pick up some really cool ideas. Okay. Um, is there too many emails in a week? Okay. So Cynthia, the answer is right now, you should be doing once a week. So in the lead up to the sale period, you should be doing once a week. During the sale, you might have four to five emails that go out, but that might be over a two week period. So you might be doubling or tripling your flow for that period of time. And then you stop, you just go back to your once a week. So it's only a very short period of time that you do a heavy email presence and then you drop it right back again. So don't um, start sending four or five emails a week right now. You only wanna do that, those four to five emails during the sale period and then you stop it again, okay? That's really important. No point sending five emails a week right now. You just want to romance, romance, romance. Okay. Um, yeah, I, Hammer, I like personally, I, I think art storefronts offer too many sales. I, I, I do three, three sales a year, right? I do one around Mother's Day. I do one near the beginning of the year and then I do Black Friday. I think that's enough, right? And the... The one thing that I keep hearing from the artists that I talk to is I don't have enough time. So if you don't have enough time, don't do two sales, just do one big one. Okay, maybe run it for an extra few days. That's, I think, really important. Yeah, okay. Um, so London, the, the templates, no, templates and ideas. No, so the funny thing about sending emails is the key is to be yourself so you can steal some ideas off people but then make them your own so uh, the thing that i found personally that works the best for me when i send an email is to be really really informal and i write an email like i'm just shooting off an email to a mate Okay. Hey, Steve, did you see this? A couple of pictures, a couple of comments and move on. Right. And they're the ones I often get the best response on. So, but that's me. So what you need to do is experiment and find the things that work for you. Um, you know, Carol's idea, check in art storefronts in the small wins. There's some really good ideas in there. Okay. And um, the reality is that you need to find things that work for you. Right. So experiment. Try something, try, try being really informal, try being, try asking questions. I love the one that I get really good response of is I've got two pictures here, not sure which one I should uh, publish. Or for instance, the other one I do is I've got this new picture and I can't remember, I can't think of a great name for it. So I tell them the story, you know, I was at this lighthouse for sunrise on this particular day, something really cool happened, tell them the story and say, can you help me? name the picture. And then what I do is I give away a print to the person who names the picture. Really simple. And it's a really good way to get engagement. And the, th the cool thing about that is I can put the same post on Facebook and on email and I get completely two, two different gr groups of people engaging with that. And I get some really good suggestions on a name suggestion for a print. It is a really good way. Yeah, absolutely, London, you have to be yourself. The only way you're gonna sell art is to be yourself. You can't be anybody else. If you try and be anybody else, you're not going to sell anything. You just, it's people see right through that when it comes to art. You have to be genuine. You have to be yourself. Um, you can want to be Superman, but you have to be yourself at the meantime. Um, yeah. So, any other questions, guys? Because I'm happy to finish early, but I'm also happy to keep plugging away. I do appreciate we've got a really good, strong group today, and we've had a real, real good group of variety. So if there's no more questions, I'm just gonna do my little two minute sales pitch. Um, 
those of you who haven't worked with me before, I run a 90 day um, program, which helps you build your audience, helps you build your email list. And yesterday we saw an absolutely perfect demonstration of, as to why Facebook is the tool, not our main marketing idea, right? Yesterday, Facebook was offline for six or seven hours for some people, it took longer to come up, but there was no access to Facebook at all. And if Facebook is the only way you're communicating with your audience, then you're building yourself, you're setting yourself up for failure. We use Facebook as a tool to advertise to get people onto our email list. Because the email list, no matter what happens to the platform, we own the email list. We can export that email list and take it away. If we move our website to a different platform or we move from MailChimp to something else, we own that list and we own that forever. So building your email list is really, really important. And that's what I help artists with, okay? So our 90-day program, which is $9.99 for everybody, except for art storefront artists, which is $7.99. And that helps you build your list. In addition to doing that, I'm doing one-on-one -on -one calls with each person who signs up, and that gives you the opportunity to focus on an issue that's focused that, that, that's built around you and your business. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to share this link and I'll share it in the email that I follow up with later on. But I appreciate that. And if you're interested in having a chat, the phone call will cost you nothing. If you decide at the end of the phone call it's not for you, that's cool too. So thanks, guys. Um, yeah, I'm not allowed to post that sort of stuff in, in art storefronts, um, Dennis. I appreciate your um, suggestion, but I can't, unfortunately. Uh, and thank you, Jonathan. Um, yeah, do I think it's worth the extra money? I, I think it's not going to be the one thing that makes... Um, the extra money is not going to be the thing that makes or breaks your business, right? The thing that makes or breaks your business is the effort that you put in. Okay, if you get to the point where you're making enough money on art storefronts that you decide that you want to upgrade your program, then do it. But it's not going to, that AR feature is not going to be the thing that helps you turn your business around. Okay, so that's not a reason to buy um, that upgrade. Um, thanks, Kimberly. Thanks, Deborah. Thanks, Ken. Right, don't get overwhelmed, guys. Just focus. I really appreciate your support. Um, Maria, I will reply to you in a moment. Um, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jonathan, just, yeah, make some money first and then worry about buying optional extras because to me, that's an optional extra. The thing you need to sell online is you need a Facebook page, you need a website that has e-commerce um, functionality, then you need to grow your email list. They're the things you need to sell, okay? Thanks everybody and good luck with Q4. Those of you that are clients, um, if you've got any questions, just drop me an email. If you're not a client and you're interested in needing some help, then um, you'll get an email from me shortly. Just reply to that and ask the questions. I'm happy to help out, okay? Thanks guys. You have a lovely day and yeah, I'm going to reply to Maria before I um, shut down, but thanks guys. I appreciate it. Okay.